Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use the offset function in Excel to produce the average annual returns of the S&P 500 for a varying number of years. What I mean by that is, I want to know what the average return was for the last two years. And you're probably thinking, oh, that's no big deal. Just write equals average, select the returns for those two years in question, and there we go. And I get the average of 24.95. And if I want to do the average for the last three years, equals average, select the three years in question, and there we go. No big deal, right? But obviously you can see this is going to be a pain because I've got uh, 51 years of returns that I want to average, and I want to keep averaging by four years, five years, six years, all the way down to 50, 51 years. So I just don't want to keep rewriting that function over, and unfortunately, the way this is working, I can't really just select this pattern and do an autofill and hope that it's going to work properly. It's just not going to do what I want it to do. So what I'm going to do is use an offset function in order to produce my averages. Now before I use the offset function, let's make it clear on how I'm going to structure this. I'm not going to use an average function. Instead, I'm going to break an average function down into its key parts. For instance, equals sum the cells in question that I want to add up divided by the number of years involved. So my little demo here is happening in D3, which is two years in. I'm going to select the cell that represents the two for the two years. And that's going to get me that two-year average. But I'm breaking it into its parts, summing the cells I want, and dividing it by basically the number of years. Okay. Well, let's write this again, but using the offset function. Equals, so I'm going to write my sum function, but instead of having a cell reference as the starting point of that sum function, instead I'm going to use an offset. Now, where am I going to offset? Well, I really want it to be the cell right up here, C2, but I can't write in C2. Instead, I'm going to write in my reference for the offset, which is going to be C3, comma, well, how many rows do I want to offset? I want to go upward one, which means I'm going to do a negative one, one cell above my present cell. However, I can't write negative one because it's not always going to be a negative one. For instance, if I want to go two above, it'll be negative two. If I want to go 10 above, it's going to be a negative 10. So instead of writing negative 1 for my rows offset, I'm going to do a negative A2, which contains the value 1. The reason I'm doing a cell reference is because my next formula is going to be A3, which would be a negative 2, and A4, which would be a negative 3. I'm still in my offset function, comma. Do I want to offset any columns? I don't. So I'm just going to write a 0 there and then close in parentheses. So offset C3, negative A2, 0. What is that really getting me? It's basically giving me C2. Colon, because that's part of the sum function. Remember with the sum function, it's the beginning of the range, colon, the end of the range. Well, this entire offset represents the beginning of my range. The end of my range is easy. That's going to be my C3 cell. Closing parentheses for the sum. Let's see what I get here. Ah, so basically 18.4 plus 31.49 is 49.89. And doing a little math, yeah, that's accurate. And if I were to autofill this down, we start to get the sum of these others. But is it truly working? For instance, for six years, my sum offset function is telling me that the sum is 80.68. Well, let's find out. Equals the sum of those first six years. There we go, 80.68. So it must be working. We're simply rebuilding that sum function by starting off with an offset and finishing off with our present or current cell. Great. Well, now that we can see that the sum part is working, I want to divide by the appropriate number cell. cell. So after the sum, I'm going to divide by, in this example, I'm working in cell D3, which is my second year. I'm going to divide by the cell that contains the number 2, because that's how many years I want to divide by. 
So my average for the first two years is 24.95. If I autofill this down a bit, now I can start to see, ah, the average for the first three years is 15.17. The average for the first four years is 16.84. Is that working? Well, let's find out. Equals average the returns of the first four years. And sure enough, 16.84. Once I can see that that's working, I'm satisfied with that, I can take that formula and just autofill it all the way down through all of my data. And there we go. So now we have something we can start to learn a little bit from. Obviously, the most recent years of the S&P 500 have been pretty darn good. The average for the last three years, 16.84. Just bold that for a moment. The average for the last 14 years, 11.06%. The average for the last 29, the average for the last 30 years, 12.17. And we can go all the way down, the average for the last 51 years, 11.12%. And of course, can we expect future results based on past results? No, we can't. But it does give us a number that we can start to use when, we're, when we are planning for the future. Is it realistic to expect 24.95% going forward for the next 10, 20 years? No, nah, probably not. Is it realistic to start expecting results of 11% for the next 10 to 20 years? Maybe not, but it's probably more realistic than 24 or 25%. Um, so using that offset function, although it's a tricky function to use, let's stretch that a little wider. Although that offset function can be pretty tricky to use, once you get the hang of it, it can really be advantageous. So again, I am summing a range of cells. The first cell in that range is basically an offset from a, pre from a current cell going to that current cell, divided by the number of values. Um, by the way, I could have, instead of using A5, if I don't have that value, I could have done a count. That would have made it a little bit more complicated, but it would have given me the fun of using the offset function a second time. So thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, thanks for calculating this data.